That's a similar screen to what we saw at the start of Police Quest 1. The Kindred. So just to be very clear, I have seen the end of this game. I sort of know where the plot goes, but that was using a command line cheat back in the day. So playing it legitimately, I think I got stuck at the hospital. But apart from that, I really don't remember anything else about this game. Hello, I'm Jim Walls, retired California Highway Patrol Officer and designer of the Police Quest series. With Police Quest, you're not just watching some movie star portraying the glamorous part of police work. Sure about that? As Detective Sonny Bonds, you're the man behind the badge. It's up to you to learn and follow correct police procedure, to make the right decisions in life and death situations. In real police work, you have to know when to be a hero and when to rely on caution and use the other team players on the force. Some of the incidents in Police Quest 3 are based on actual events that occurred during the course of my career. I managed to survive them. Let's see if you can do as well under pressure. Here's the scene you're about to be walking into. Lytton, once a quiet and peaceful little town, has been growing like a weed. There's new industry, good jobs, and a decent standard of living. Unfortunately, progress is not without its side effects. Poverty and crime are going up about as fast as a new cultural sensor. Weird analogy. Homicide detective Sonny Bonds and his wife Marie are still on a honeymoon high from their wedding a few years back. How many years ago? We'll find out shortly, we'll look at the manual. Marie's got a good job at Oak Tree Mall, and the two have a beautiful new home. Oak Tree Mall, we went there in Police Quest 2. As for Sonny, he was promoted to a detective sergeant with the Listen Police Department. As the story opens, Sonny's just finished his sergeant's training and is back on duty. Overburdened as the department is, he's been assigned to traffic division for a bit. Seems traffic's always understaffed. We're starting at the beginning again. Well, that's Sonny's life, and it's a good one, worth protecting. And now it's time for you to assume the role of Detective Sonny Bonds. I happen to know you're in for a heck of a day. This is so awkward given that Sonny is named after your son, dude. So awkward and so weird. So the first thing I'm going to do is save my game because up on the top left there it showed 1406. And I've seen that if I skip the intro, it actually starts at 1400 instead, so... I really don't know if this is all playing out in real time, but judging by what we just saw, I'd say it is, and that's deeply concerning. I have done about two seconds of testing on this, and with respect to what I'm going to need to edit in post and everything else that I need to do, if I look at a box like this, where it has these square borders, that will stay there permanently. Hopefully. Hopefully that doesn't change. And I can read that as many times as I need to, and hopefully not flub it and or edits out all the flubs. However, if I'm in dialogue with someone, we can do that just by going into this room over here. Oh, you're moving so slowly, Sonny. I get the caution as part of a police officer's rep trial, but you really need to walk a bit faster. If we talk to someone here, this box here will stay here permanently. This box here, however, will disappear by itself very quickly. I really only get one chance to read it, and if I screw it up, I'm going to have to put it in post. So, yeah. And I'm hoping it doesn't get into the extreme variance that we saw in Police Quest 2, which utterly ruined that playthrough. But, yeah, I'll do my best. Alright, I think that's a spoiler, so let me just hit restart on this. See that? It just showed 1400 instead of 1406 on the left. I really don't know what I'm in for here, whether I'm going to need to consult the walkthrough very early or um, after an hour or so, but we'll see how we go, as always. Alright, let's take a quick look at the manual, shall we? 
Yeah, I really remember nothing about this game other than the ending. One of our particular officers is uh, not who they should be. I remember getting stuck in a hospital. And I also remember trying to book evidence and having to get the right codes here. And I had a hell of a time. Definitions. I did see something unusual here. What was it? Yeah, look at this. Traffic officer. Point nine. Extreme caution must be used while operating code three, red lights and siren. Negligence can result in liability against the officer. So I take that to mean that we cannot just put in our siren and drive around willy nilly. We can only use code three when it's actually justified. Unlike what we did in Police Quest one back in the day. There's a whole bunch of good stuff here, which I think I'm going to need to refer to as the game goes on. We have traffic. We have criminal psychologist. There was something else here. How to use the computer. Breathalyzers, courtroom procedure, forceful entry into dwellings. This would have been very good to know in a certain scene in Police Quest 2. Obtaining entry into private property. There we go. So this one I think is interesting. If an officer is in hot pursuit and suspect enters private property to avoid apprehension, the officer may enter that property. However, it is not advisable to do so. And if an officer arrives at a property and presents himself and says, hey, I'd like to get inside, you can only get inside by obtaining a search warrant. That would have been very good to know. The map, I have no idea how to read that. I am not an electrical engineer. Yeah, let me read this because this is hilarious. Guide for new cadets. You're in a new uniform. You're excited. You're nervous. You're ready to take on the Sicilian crime world and the Latin American drug traffickers and come out unscathed. What the fuck? You're a cop. Before you start your first day on the job, there are some things you should know about the road you've chosen. Someone once said that being a cop is 95% boredom. Routine is the foundation of police work. And that's why so far I've preferred Police Quest 1 over 2. Routine that can include anything from sitting under a bridge with a radar gun in your hand for 16 hours to making a midnight trip to the emergency room with half a kid in the back of your car. Ugh. It may not seem glamorous to rookies like you, but men who have been in the force know that a cop's got to do what a cop's got to do. Fuck me. What's the other 5% of being a cop? Try plunging down the steepest roller coaster you can imagine at about 150 miles per hour. At night. Except there's nobody at the controls down below. You've got the controls. There's a lot of screaming people on the ride behind you, and you're the one steering. Now, the brakes go... I don't know if that's supposed to be now the brakes go or now the brakes go. I don't know. I know what you're thinking. No, you don't. You're thinking that 95 and 5 sound like pretty good percentages. You're thinking that you could manage being lucky 5% of the time. Trouble is, that's an average. On certain days, for certain cops, things can get much worse. But that's why you joined, isn't it? The force needs you. Listen needs you. And you can steer real good. So what are you waiting for? Go out and do it. This is a little bit propaganda-y for my liking, I'm afraid. Is there anything else in here? Yeah, this is stuff here. I'm not going to read all of this out, but basically this is a summary of what happened in Police Quest 1. He was promoted to narcotics. Wait, homicide was Police Quest 2. So, Police Quest 2, he was promoted to homicide. And Police Quest 3, as we've just seen, he has been promoted to Sergeant Detective. And this is all out of order. Okay, so we got married in 88, and we've been promoted in 91, so it's three years later, I think. Wait, that was at the end of 88, so it's just over two years later. Marie's birthday is on 420, nice. I can't read that, so I'm not going to zoom in. Mortgage loan application, blah, blah, blah. He was very good. He took down the Death Angel. He's awesome, etc., etc. Recommending Officer Bonds be promoted to a Homicide Detective Grade 2 immediately. Yep, that was in the previous game. All these photos. No, I don't agree. There was definitely something I wanted to read here. Where was it? No, that's just the credits. Yeah, I'm not going to read all this, but this is basically the events of Police Quest 2, where, where Jesse Baines escaped from jail and we went after him in the city of Stilson. Where was it? According to Wilkins, Baines returned at that moment and a shootout between the two men ensued. Baines was fatally wounded and died instantly. 
Where was the... Uh, where was it? I know what I'm looking for. Just can't find it. Yeah, it's here. Review board ruled justifiable homicide, uh, September 89. Judges quote, There's no way Officer Bonds could have brought Baines back alive. That was a shootout that we saw at the end of Police West 2. And I don't know if I believe that. I mean, yes, we played through it and that's the way it played out. But I really don't know if there was any other way we could have brought him back alive, really. Like maybe perhaps we could have called for backup. I mean, Keith was around. Fuck, I hope Keith's not in this game. I don't remember if he is or not. All right, so I think I'll alt tab back to the game now and I will refer to the manual as necessary. But yeah, I think this one's gonna be a doozy. Yeah, I can speed him up to move him around, but with these dialogue boxes, when I'm talking to characters, they will always disappear after a very short period of time, no matter what I've got the speed set to. As always, I'll do my best with the edits on this, but mileage will vary. Okay, well, let's take a look around. You're in the hallway of the second level of the Listen Police Station. Several office doors line the hallway. Second level. The station's public address system. The elevator provides access to the other floors of the police station. Generally how elevators work. That's the elevator button. Hmm. Policeman Blue. Is that really a thing? I hope not. That's Homicide's hall window. That's the door to the Homicide office. The bulletin board is where people post articles of interest, personal ads, and Chinese restaurant business cards. You look over the bulletin board, but see nothing of interest. Can I touch the PA? No. The window overlooks scenic downtown Lytton. Call that scenic, really? That's the door to the sergeant's office. Hey, that's you. Are there two thoughts there? Or is that part of the you? I need to figure this out immediately. Looking for a you. Give me a you, game. There we go. Okay, the dots there is part of the you. That's okay. I saw those two dots there and I panicked. It's too early to be criticizing the game's grammar. This is Sergeant's office. The bookcase contains law reference materials. Those are file drawers. Very observant. The bulletin board in here has information so old that there's a missing person bulletin about Jimmy Hoffa. Ah, some of the fine arts displayed here at the Lytton County Police Department. Really? There's something on the wall there, but I can't click it. That chair's for your visitors. Your desk is neat and orderly, probably because you don't spend a lot of time here. Your phone sits silently on your desk. It's your good old, well-worn chair. Your computer occupies the center of your desk. In this business, the computer is an indispensable tool. You know, there's a whole section in the manual about it. The in house basket appears to have something in it. Okay, we'll come back for that. It's a garbage can. That chair belongs to the lieutenant. And that's the lieutenant stuff. What about this one? No, we get nothing there. Can I interact with anything here? You prefer to catch the criminals. Let the lawyers read all that crap. Again, going after the lawyers. Wow. There's nothing you need in the file drawers. Don't mess with the lieutenant stuff. You have your own chair, leave the lieutenants alone. There's nothing even remotely interesting on that bulletin board. Can't touch that, good. Why would you want to sit on that hard visitor's chair when you can sit on your own comfy one? Fair point, but why would you not give the visitor a comfy chair as well? I was aiming for the drawer, but Sonny's gone for the chair. All right, let's grab that. You remove a form from the basket. It's a departmental disciplinary action form with the notes attached. The notes from the lieutenant reads, okay, it's this dude here. Bonds, please interview officer Pat Morales regarding a complaint. The complainant alleges that the officer used profanity and verbally abused him during the issuing of a citation. Determine disciplinary action, if any, based on your interview. 
Leave this form on my desk when you're done. We got a point for that. Look at this state at the art computer. Holy crap. That's the computer monitor. It's a computer. That's the power switch. That's the computer access card slot. I'm not having a go at you audience, but looking at the um, analytics, I reckon about 50% of you will not recognize what that is. And that's just terribly depressing. We do not have an access card, do we? We have a bunch of stuff. Your Beretta 9mm handgun. Is that how they're getting out of not paying royalties by changing the E to an A? Your handcuffs are made of stainless steel. You have $10. Man, we are broke. We are always broke. It's a complainant form that was filed against Officer Morales. All right. How do I get up? Like that. So, first things first. Can we use our gun? No, I can't shoot the computer. What kind of game is this? So across here we have Homicide. The graph on the wall charts homicides for the past three years. Like inflation, the crime rate rises steadily. The file cabinet belongs to the captain. He always keeps it locked. The bookcase has old paperbacks and phone books in it. Nothing interests you. Why would they have paperbacks in here? None of the books interest you. Rarely do you find anything of interest on the bulletin board. I accidentally clicked it twice and I saw it. There it is. Come on. I know you're here. Herein lies the names of the programmers who, without undue fanfare, brought you this game. Doug Oldfield, Chris Hoyt, Kim Bowdish, and Mike Larson. They weren't in the intro credits, so I wonder if this is an easter egg that was slipped in behind someone's back. The desks are for officers assigned to homicide. The chairs are for officers assigned to homicide. What about the computers? You're not in the homicide division, so we can't look at the computers. Captain Tate's desk is well organized, as usual. Oh, there's a dude here. I didn't even see him there. Captain Tate runs the homicide division for LPD. All right, can I touch him? Oh, can I talk to him? Yeah, so just to demo the point, I spoke to him and I flubbed the very end of the read and then it disappeared. So I've either got to put it in post or I've got to get it right the first time. You might see a lot of saving during this playthrough, just saying. Sergeant Bonds, good to see you. Sorry I can't talk, got an internal affairs meeting, and I have to finish writing this report. That's basically my normal reading voice, I think, and that disappeared before I finished. I'm worried. Sergeant, don't you think you'd better get back out on the streets where you belong? Yeah, fair. The window looks out into the hallway. The homicide room. It's just frustrating because those other boxes stay as long as I need them to stay and I can dismiss them at any time. But when we're talking to people, it disappears pretty much instantly. It's a smoke detector. A small label on the side reads, for best results, hold directly over flame. <laughs> That's not how smoke detectors work, dude. That's the door to vice. The window is in the vice office. That's the door to the briefing room. We need to go there. I can see something propping open that door, but I can't look at it. Uh, yeah, that's the same thing that we saw previously. As is that. That's the door to the criminal psychologist's office. There's a section about that in the manual. The window is in the psychologist's office. That's a weird way of saying it. The blinds are shut. Let's go give everyone their briefing. Although I think I need to speak to... No, Sonny.
Are we really fit to be briefing these people? That's Officer Carl Law. Carl's a real cut up. Enough for me with that. Don't know if that means stuck up, maybe? Not sure. That's Officer Joseph Banks. Young, smart, and takes his job very seriously. That's Officer Kevin Miller. He's one of the old school cops. The female officer is Pat Morales. You hear she's a tough cookie. Okay, so we don't actually know her. The message board is where the daily briefing notes are posted after the briefing. Soothing, isn't it? What the hell is it? This is the briefing room. The junior officers meet here for news, reminders, and the occasional reprimands. Oh boy. The chalkboard has nothing important on it at this time. Can I draw a dick and balls? The podium is used for giving briefings. The clipboard contains the notes for today's briefing. Did we put that there or did someone else put that there perhaps? Okay, let's talk to some people. Referring to the academy, Carl says... No doubt the academy hasn't changed any since the crack keeps rolling downhill. Unnecessary. Officer Joe Banks responds after being interrupted from his report writing. Geez, Sarge, I'd really like to finish this report. Not looking up, Officer Banks says, Please don't break my concentration. Uh, are you going to say something, or have I just bugged it? Oh, missed something there. Welcome back from the Palace of Pain. Yeah, he was saying, get on with it. I need to talk to you. Morales, I need to have a word with you in my office after this afternoon's briefing. Okay, so why did I do this time? Wait, don't tell me. Another complaint from some moron who thinks he was a victim of police brutality. Okay, okay, your office after the briefing. I heard ya. Sheesh. I'm so sorry about the voices. Can we get on with the briefing, Sarge? I've got a date with a coffee shop. Alright, fine. I can't give the briefing that way. I think I need to grab the clipboard. Sorry, no chalk. There's no chalk in here? Once again, what kind of police station is this? Those postings need to stay up for public consumption. Public? They're not for the public, they're for us. Uh, is that a light switch? The listen public needs a sergeant. Give us the crap of the day so we can get out of here. All right, fine. You begin the briefing. Good afternoon, people. I will be filling in for Sergeant Jaco while he's on vacation. You advise the afternoon shift of the procedural information and announcements listed on the clipboard and close by saying... Have a safe shift and think about making right-hand approaches on your car stops. That was much simpler than the briefings that Dooley gave us back in the day. Okay, I think we're on a timer here, so let's go back to our office. And have a chat to Pat Morales. Who has a terrible accent? I am so sorry, everyone. She's on the hard visitor chair. You have a serious talk with Morales. I have a complaint here alleging that you were verbally abusive to one of the violators you stopped. The complaint states that you yelled, screamed, and used profanity. So what do you want from me? The guy was a jerk. He'd have liked to do more than file a complaint, if you know what I mean. Ugh. Continuing the interview, you ask. All right, why don't you tell me what happened? I pulled the guy over, right? He's gone 75, maybe 80, in a 50 mile zone. I walk up to the car and boom! Right away, he starts eyeing me and lipping off. I have to put up with that crap? Uh, yes. You ask Officer Morales directly. Did you raise your voice and use profanity with the man, or not? Look, you try being a woman cop for just one day, then tell me how to do my job. Take like that as a yes. Truthfully, 
I don't remember what the hell I said, but whatever it was, I had a damn good reason. Okay, Morales, that's it for now. Get back on duty and see if you can keep the civil in civil servants. Sure, Sarge. Whatever you say. Dramatic sting. You think about what you've learned regarding the civilian complaints. I'm thinking about what else I've learned here, and that is when these two little boxes showed up here, they disappeared automatically. I didn't click that. Oh god, this one's also going to be a nightmare to record. And from memory, I think it's a much tougher game than Police Quest 1 or 2, so yeah, this one's also going to be a nightmare to record, but we'll see how we go. Oh, okay, we have choices. I pretty much know what we have to do, but again, I know a little bit about this game. What is this complaint? Unfounded. You find the complaint unfounded. Exonerate it. Not believing the complainants, you exonerate the officer. Sustained. Based on the interview, you conclude that disciplinary action is necessary. You sustain the complaints against her. Undetermined. Feeling undecided based on the interview, you label the complaint undetermined. Um, she basically admitted it. I mean, we saw that in Police Quest 1 when we pulled over Helen Hotz and in the remake, not Helen Hotz. She went off at us and all we could really do is just say, have a lovely day, ma'am. Sign a ticket and go. I am going to sustain it. You leave the complaints on the lieutenant's desk. Yep, that's where we were told to leave it. Okay, so we are in the traffic division. I assume we now need to hit the streets and do some traffic patrol. But first, I want to take a look around here. We're going to make another save just in case this thing is ticking over in real time. The door to vice. The vice door is locked. Okay, we're not going in there. The criminal psychologist. Oh, I remember that thing. And now that I'm an adult, I know what those catches are for. The proverbial confessing catch. A window overlooks a parking lot. The blinds are drawn. This is the office of the department's criminal psychologist, Dr. Sidney Ames. Dr. Ames provides a chair for those who feel silly lying down. Ugh. If you feel silly lying down, uh, I don't want to judge you too harshly, but I don't think you should ever feel silly lying down on one of those, really. It's a theory receptacle. I need to read that twice. I thought that said therapy. Theory receptacle. Very curious game, very curious. A bit of green is always nice. This guy probably talks to his plants. The filing cabinets have a lot of dirt on a lot of people. Oh, I wonder if we're in there. That's Dr. Ames's desk. There's a file on the desk. It is a personnel file. It's one of those mindless executive toys. Dr. Ames' chair. I can't believe that. I've looked at a bunch of things here and excuse the apostrophes correctly. Dr. Ames' chair is made of soft cornithian leather. I think that's how you pronounce that. Just looking at the titles of Dr. Ames's books puts you to sleep. That file. Can I check out that file or am I going to get busted? I should get kicked off the force for doing this. Just as you reach for the file. Hey, that's highly confidential material, Sergeant. While you turn bright red, Dr. Ames asks, What is it that you want, Bonds? I'm a very busy man. I need to find a voice for him. Was he sleeping under his desk? Dr. Ames is one of those intellectual types. Not a bad guy, but a little patronizing. You try striking up a conversation with Dr. Sidney Ames. If you haven't got anything useful to show me, Bonds, please leave. I've got no time for chit chat. That's all disappearing very fast. Yeah, I think it was just hiding under the desk. It totally is. 
If you want to play Psychologist, you bought the wrong game. Yeah, again, those square boxes disappeared instantly. This is terribly depressing. We're on level two of the Listen Police Station. What else is around here? Uh, I take my eyes off the screen to make sure I'm recording and then Bonds doesn't walk off. Okay, so ground one, two, three. Sounds like there's a video game playing in the background. The third floor is home to the computer facilities and dispatch. The dispatchers. The glass wall divides dispatch from the computer facilities. Behind their glass wall, dispatch is busy monitoring the police band. The dispatch center is equipped with the latest audio visual equipment. I feel there's a uh, word missing there. Law enforcement has certainly gone high tech, hasn't it? I feel there's a comma missing there. It's all good until I start misusing apostrophes. The table holds various computer magazines, none of which interests you. Really? I love those things. The computer magazines are of little interest. Don't rap on the window and disturb dispatch. Yep, there's been times when you've wanted to get your hands around the neck of a dispatcher. Sonny is a violent man, very clearly. The size of the department's main computer banks always astounds you. You're not qualified to screw around with the mainframe. The elevated floor consists of individual movable tiles. All the computer cables run underneath the tiles. Oh wow. So this floor is like not actually a stable floor. And the cables run underneath it. That's Mike's cabinet. And I assume this is Mike. Mike Downs is the head technician. He runs the computer facilities. Don't look through Mike's cabinets. That is Mike's in-out basket. That's Mike's desk. That's Mike's computer. That's the same thing. <sighs> All right, I suppose we'd better have a chat to you. The head technician, Mike Downs, stops his work and says, Listen, Sarge, I'm a very busy person. Unless you're here on official business, I don't have time for you. That's definitely a stereotypical 80s programmer. If you don't have your access card, you're out of sync, man. I can't let you access my data without the right authorization sequence. These discs don't spin without the right paperwork. Come back when you got the requisition form. You're telling me I need to fill in a form so that I can get an access card to my computer and I don't already have that? I'm the sergeant for fuck's sake. The lab tech doesn't have time to look at your stuff, Bonds. That's not what I'm trying to do here. It's us, Sonny. Sure, I'll tell him. Hey, Sonny, dispatch needs you to drive out to Aspen Falls to respond to a call. All other units are occupied. All right, we've been given a task to perform. That was random. Aspen Falls. So I've got a lot of questions. Where do I find a requisition form so that I can get an access card to access my computer? I do not know. You're standing in the first floor hallway of the Lytton County Police Department. Floor's colour is policeman blue. It's a fire extinguisher. The smoke detectors help protect the building from fire. No, they don't. They just alert us when there's a fire. Can I grab the fire extinguisher? No. But there's no fire. What's in here? That's the door to the storage closet. Yeah, okay. There's an open box of batteries in the closet. You take some batteries from the box. 
The closet is cluttered with boxes. There's a box of... They're road flares. Okay. Road flares in the closet. You take some flares. We saw those in the remake of Police Quest 1 and I wondered who on earth would actually be carrying those things. Other than, you know, the police. Uh, locker rooms are on the rise. So you know what I have to do. The sign reads, Women. That's the entrance to the women's locker room. Oh! Whew, that lady ought to be in professional boxing. Guess you went in at the wrong time. You men are all alike. Only one thing on your filthy minds. Freaking pervert. Yes, I had to put that in post. Ugh. Actually, we don't need to do that, do we? The sign reads men. That's the entrance to the men's locker room. All right, let's go inside. Hopefully I've got a locker in here and hopefully I know the combination. This is the men's locker room. Hence the lockers. You're standing in the men's locker room. Nothing about the floor. The toilet stalls lend a pleasant ambiance to the locker room. The benches provide a place to sit while you're getting dressed. Oops. The TP dispenser is empty. Good thing you noticed it while you're still standing. Just your regular old run-of-the-mill John. I don't think I've ever used the word John to describe a toilet ever. I know what it means, but you know. That's our locker in the center there. Now, what was my combination? Oh yeah, I wrote it down on the inside cover of my police manual. One sec. You wrote it down on the inside cover. There we go. Cadet Sonny Bonds, June 1976. Okay, so if he joined the force in 1976, he's been around for 15 years. Promotes as a sergeant in 91. June to January, so 14 and a half years, pretty much. The combination here looks like it is 776. Let's try that out. Also, Sierra, I'm sorry I'm showing off all the copy protection stuff. Please don't sue me. Uh, I didn't have to click anything also, it just opened. This is your flashlight. This is your notebook. This is your PR slash 24 nightstick. So dramatic. You remove your nightstick. You remove your notebook. Are we going to remove the flashlight? Oh my God. You remove your flashlight. Wow. You store some of your equipment in this locker. All right, I've picked up everything. Highway flares. PR24 nightstick. Your regulation flashlight. Notebook. Flashlight batteries. Okay. I think Tabe goes into the slot B there. You put the batteries in the flashlight. And I can't use the notebook on myself, so I can't make notes like we did back in the day. Uh, I really want to know where these forms are. I thought that was somewhere around here. Perhaps they're back in my office. Because just quietly in my brief testing a couple of weeks ago, I did manage to get into the computer. Maybe I need to speak to the captain over there or maybe the lieutenant's inside here. The in-out basket appears to have something else in it. Okay. Is that the form? Yes. You remove a requisition form for a computer access card from the baskets. Oh, that full stop. Okay, it's not an apostrophe. The playthrough is still live. A computer ID request form. I imagine we need to take that to Mike upstairs, perhaps. Or maybe we need to fill it out first. I mean, logic would dictate we would have to fill it out first, but I don't know if the game's going to force me to do that or not. Yeah. 
Her technician stops his work and says, Yeah, we saw that. Those discs don't spin without the right paperwork. That is terrible, dude. You hand the requisition form to Mike, the head technician. Hey, no problem. You've got the new Mark V model, don't you? What a beaut. It goes from 0 to 30 megahertz in 3.5 seconds. Oh, you've got such a punchable face, dude. And it has a 4 megabyte memory capacity, XGA graphics, and a 5 millisecond network access time. You wait for Mike to shut up. But like a streak of bad luck, he keeps going. Just don't spill coffee on it, man. You should have seen what I had to go through when the chief dripped ice cream all over his. Yuck. Mike logs your new card and places it on his desk. Okay, Bonds, here's a card. It goes in face up. Arrow first. I know that's a little hard for you cop types to handle. And fuck you. But you'll figure it out. It's real simple, man. Just boot up your machine and stick in your card. And this guy's a douche. You pick up the computer access card. Mike mumbles to himself. I'm getting sick and tired of cops who don't return things. You hear Mike tell the dispatcher. Get on the radio and tell that dimwit Banks to get that tracking device back to me. Tracking device? Dispatch responds. Officer Banks says that he needs to track her for three more days. <laughs> Your failure to respond to the Aspen Falls call resulted in a suspension. An officer who doesn't report to assigned calls puts the public in danger. That's how easy it is to lose. Alright, so we need to uh, get out there immediately. I can't see the clock up here, so I don't know just how long I'm spending dicking around. I vaguely recall the motion tracker or the tracker device being very, very important. You're in the underground garage at the Lytton County Police Department's new building. Sign reads, Listen County Police Departments. The automatic doors lead to the prisoner booking and the jail. Oh, it's actually built in here this time, okay. Oh, I thought it was elsewhere. I've got vivid memories of that room. The lockers are for storing your weapons before entering the jail. Alright, we're not making that mistake today. It's the light switch for the garage. That door leads to evidence lockup and lab analysis. The marked patrol car is used by uniformed officers on duty. The unmarked department car is used by non-uniformed officers on duty. In other words, undercover. I don't have to get any keys this time, okay. So that entire sequence took two minutes. Or maybe eight minutes, depending on which save game I used. 